Here we are again with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't been to the johnmariani.com in a while, wonderful, wonderful website, lots of interesting stuff, including his novels of fiction, which are getting really exciting now because he's got something serialized and we're not going to talk about it much, but uh, he's, he's got like 45 chapters up there already of his, uh, the latest book he's working on. It's really exciting. Hey, John, uh, we've been having some great conversations recently about uh, Europe, traveling to Europe, and the big cities are overcrowded, and, and uh, mm. you know, the, the, the season is kind of extended. Is there, is there maybe a, a better time to go if you're willing to go off-season? In other words, holidays are gone, uh, people are home. Uh, go in January and February. I would imagine that's the off season uh in europe and and everywhere uh it is it is um and that's about all that's left january february maybe a little bit in march i mean it depends of course on the country not all countries are going to be as as uh, overwhelmed as as we've suggested in other programs like italy is would be foremost and and, and uh but again they are the big cities so uh paris has the olympics coming up next summer so you definitely don't want to go then um yeah now the only um uh caution is that of course uh europe has wonderful wonderful skiing so if you're going for ski sports that's going to be busy uh, in places like san moritz and uh, Courcheval and cortina um, so those are going to be very expensive uh, to to go to but uh, there are nearly as many skiers as there are people who get off cruise ships in the middle of uh, middle of uh, September or October. So um, having said that, and of course, Scandinavia. So, I mean, it is these other countries like Scandinavia, uh, Germany, the Rhine Valley, um, all of all of uh, France outside of Paris, all of England outside of London, um, pretty much all of Ireland, including Dublin, um, and Iceland. Well, Iceland has become the place to go. During COVID, Iceland became the place to go because I didn't have COVID, apparently, and uh, <laughs> it became very, very popular. Now, you want to go to these places in January and February. Well, <clears throat> there's varying degrees of cold. And first of all, it can be quite jolly. I've been in Vienna and Austria in January with the beautiful snowfall. I mean, wouldn't you want to see Vienna in, or, or Salzburg? You know, during Christmas is, is terrific, but uh, at any time of the year with that, that's how you think of places like Salzburg, Austria, as having a little blanket of snow. So you have to make that part of your um, your design and your expectations. But most places do not have that much. I mean, the more southern you go. So the French Riviera and the Italian Riviera are, if not vacant, very, very nice places to go during the uh, winter um, and much, much less expensive. Um, Liguria, which is the start of the uh, Cinque Terre, uh, Italian Riviera, going into the French Riviera, uh, which has remarkable culture, great food, rotten beaches are all stony and so forth. You don't go to the beach in Cannes or Nice, um, but they're, they're wonderful cities. If you like art, and Picasso and so forth, those are the places to uh, go. As I said, Normandy, visit the beaches at Normandy. Don't go during the summer. Um, it's it's overwhelmed. But the beaches of Normandy is is, is breathtaking. It's very deeply affecting. Um, La Rochelle, uh, uh, cities along the Brittany coastline. Um, go to, to see the great cathedrals of Charles and stuff. This is the time to do it uh, because you're not going to be waiting online to see all of these things. Um, and Venice, who wants to be in Venice in January? Um, well, first thing you do, you um, you rent a movie or you get a DVD of uh, Don't Look Back. It was a movie made in the 70s with Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie. It's a mystery ghost ghost movie uh, set in Venice in, um, in, in winter when everything is foggy, very atmospheric. And a lot of people having seen that movie want to go there because of of that, you know, it's also <laughs> Venice in, in winters where um, uh, Ernest Hemingway set his his novel across the river through the trees, um, and a lot of people who 
love Hemingway, like to visit Hemingway's haunts, which would also go for places like Pamplona. Spain, of course, is going to be nice and toasty warm for the most part in the so south of Spain uh, during the uh, during the winter. So that's a very good, very good choice. Um, and then Eastern Europe, too. Uh, it's going to be a little colder, but these are places that are not overrun. You're going to have great bargains in places like Croatia, Montenegro, the Dalmatian coast, uh, Slovenia, Albania. These places are cheap even in the high season, but um, now they are they're really, really cheap. And again, um, check with a travel agent if you can find one anymore um, or people who really are in the travel writers that you trust. Um, because what we do, if I got a question about a place I haven't been, I bounce it off with the colleagues I, I know and try to get you in, an answer for that. Um, and as you know, and I've been nice enough to say, my articles in both Forbes and the Virtual Wame are not just about the museums of Vienna or the restaurants of Rome. They, you get much more of a context of, of why you want to be in a place. I mean, I, I know people, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law in particular, they travel a great, great deal, and they spend exactly 24 to 36 hours in a great big city. And they say, okay, we have 20 minutes to visit the Vatican, and then we have 15 minutes to go to the Uffizi, and then, and then we got to go across town and go to the train and catch the 220 train. Um, a lot of people travel like that. If this is, what was that movie? If this is Tuesday, it must be Belgium. Yeah. Very funny, very funny movie back in the uh, 70s when, when traveling had just started to take off with uh, seven, 707s getting yeah. across um very funny movie so for all those reasons um uh do your homework um and if you don't want to go skiing or um, um what do they go where they brush the thing on the ice curling uh, <laughs> you're not into that sort of thing. but again it can be i've been to san moritz in the winter and it's it's just magical just absolute yeah. winter wonderlands so well, I'm Consider. I, I'm not. I'm not a great traveler. Uh, we don't travel that often. But I do actually prefer going off season, uh, avoiding the crowds. There's no it, just going. Let's say New York and Christmas it holds no attraction to me. I'd much rather go when I know nobody's there. I, I, and you know, all I found that all the great places to go, the atmosphere may be different. Let's say in the off season, but Everything you want to see is still there. Like the museum, the, if you're, if you're a museum kind of person, uh, then it's just a wonderful experience of going and being able to not feel pushed around. Uh, yeah. Because all all the stuff you want to see is still there. It's just maybe yeah. some of the statues have an overcoat on. My wife went to the <laughs> Metropolitan Museum of Art last night. Yeah. There's a a Manet Cezanne uh, exhibition, which is very very popular. All of their exhibitions are. And she said, you know, we we get in this room and there's 30 paintings that you you have to push your way through a crowd to get close to the wall. It's it's just it's the success yeah. of art. Yeah. More people. Did you know that more people go to museums of art in the United States on a Sunday than go to all the NFL games together? Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. John, great advice. Great travel advice. Somewhere in their future. Well, I got to talk about restaurants. I want to hear about some of the great steak places in New York. We've got to catch up on that. Sure. Talk to you soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.